So are you ready to PR yourself? We'll remove the mystery from all things PR and we'll discuss everything from our top strategies to tips and tricks and everything that you can utilize to further enhance your brand or your message. I've been in media, I'm a journalist, and I'm also a publicist. I am Leah Frazier, CEO of Think3 Media and your host for PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. Welcome back to Frazier. another episode of PR Let's go. Yourself with Leah Frazier. I am your host, Leah Frazier, and I am so excited to be back. We're back with another power-packed episode with another publicist who is a publicist for podcasters and who helps folks to gain podcast traction and it is awesome. I'll just let you know that. Um, we actually live streamed the episode when we did it. So sometimes I will decide to go live with those episodes that I know that people may have questions or they may want to interact with the guest live. And it was awesome. So I can't wait for you guys to get to the tips and tricks. Like there were so many nuggets that there were things that I didn't even know that just listening back, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to do that for my clients. So when I tell you it is good stuff, it is good stuff. But so happy to be back. I've been traveling once again. I went back to Dubai. So for many of you that have listened for a very long time, you know that I annually will go to Dubai. Um, I was there with my fiance. We had an absolutely fabulous time. We were celebrating the 10 year anniversary for Kena Williams, who is our travel coordinator. And actually my fiance works for her. So I get the double perks. I'm her client and he works for her. Um, This was her 10th year of bringing a group of black travelers to Dubai. When she first started out, it was just for fun. Dubai was one of her favorite places 10 years ago and she just opened it up to friends. So it started off with a couple of people. The next year was 25 folks. The next year after that, it was 50 until it grew to 500 in 2017. Uh, when I went for the first time in 2022, our group was at, I believe we went over with 250 people in 2022 and 2023, which was last year. She took a group of 350 and just this past, uh, October, which was last month, we went over with 450 people and she celebrated her 10th year with a fabulous gala. It was at the Atlantis of uh, the Royal. So if you knew when they opened that hotel and Beyonce did her famous performance opening that hotel in Dubai, that's where we were at. And that's all I could think about was like, Beyonce walk this ground. And so I'm such a nerd. Um, but it was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful event. If you know Dubai, everything is opulent. There's like gold flakes on stuff for no reason. Like, why do I need gold flakes on my chocolate cake? But why not? Right? Like, that's their motto over there is like, why not? We're just going to do it. Um, so it was amazing. The food was incredible. We danced the night away. I was like, oh, I'm older now. You know, I'm not going to stay and shut it down. Oh, we shut it down my fiance, he, he likes to sleep, but I, I shut it down on the dance floor and we just had a great time. So shout out to Kena Williams. If you want to follow her on Facebook, her profile is under Kena Leo. So K E N N A L E O. That's her public page on uh, Facebook. And she has the most incredible travels. And I only do group travel through her because she is just that amazing. So then we left Dubai, myself and a friend, and we went over, it was an hour flight over to Oman. And so Oman is just, y'all, it is like, I felt like I had stepped off the plane and into like a Bible book. The architecture of the buildings were definitely like, not just original, but true to the land. And, uh, the, the people dressed in their traditional garb. And I just felt like, I don't know, it was just, it was just beautiful. And I, and, and the people were beautiful and very humble. And we went to different markets and we had a tour guide that he was just the sweetest guy. We went to the mosque there and, and, and it was just awesome. So I highly recommend if you can go into Muscat. Uh, 
we climbed to the top of this one mountain and I, I ain't gonna say climb like we hiked now. We drove up there. I maybe walked up a couple steps, but we were at the top of this mountain and we were able to see just beautiful lands and buildings in Muscat. And it was a phenomenal view. And I was just like, wow, like I never would have chosen this place had it have not been for my friend. And so next year when I go to Dubai, I am definitely going back because there was, we were only there for four days and there's so much more that you can do out there. Now I'll tell y'all this, it was hot. So those little portable fans that everybody's buying on Amazon and all of that, you definitely gonna need about two or three of those. But other than that, as far as the land, the people, the culture, it top notch, top, top notch. Um, And that's that. So I'm back now. We're going to get into this episode with Christina Linkowski. And she's just awesome. She sends me great guests all the time. And then I guess she was like, well, I want to be on the show. And so I ain't mad at it. So Christina is a publicity strategist and seasoned online entrepreneur with longtime PR agency experience. At her personal agency right now, Publicity by Christina, she helps authors, thought leaders, and business coaches add credibility, expand their audience reach, and consistently create client-winning, product-selling opportunities through aligned podcast appearances. To date, she and her team have secured her clients with more than 400 podcast recordings on top shows like PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. (laughs) <laughs> the Unleash Your Ambition podcast, the online business show with Tyler McCall, her empire builder, and so much more. So after we come back from the break, Christina is going to talk about how you can amplify your brand and your message beyond just being a podcast guest. Like, what does that look like when you go on a podcast? How do you take that and then maximize your appearance so it doesn't fall flat. How should you be looking at podcasting as a strategy? Now, I will say we have covered podcasting in the past, but the tips and tricks y'all are going to get in this episode was not covered. I'll let you know that. Um, Christina really breaks this thing down. She shows, she's going to show you the value in, in being a podcast guest and the value in uh, you know, securing podcast appearances and what it can do for your brand. And she explains it in a way that has not been done before. So you're going to want to check this out. Before we begin, I just, I really do want to apologize. I'm under the weather. I came back from Oman. Actually, I got this when I was in Oman and uh, just came down with a really bad cold. And so I think it's turned into a sinus infection. So I am just really, really, I, I, I'm fighting for my life right now, y'all. I'm really just trying to make it, but I wanted to make sure that this episode came out so that you guys could have something to listen to as I recover. So when we come back for the break, it will be Christina Lenkowski from Publicity by Christina. And let me know what you think when you hear the episode. You're going to want to stay tuned. So we'll be back right after the break. This episode is brought to you by KitCaster. KitCaster books you on top podcasts. How do funded startup founders attract prospects and talent? Podcast interviews. How do entrepreneurs with exits find new deals? Podcast interviews. How do C-suite execs differentiate in crowded markets? Podcast interviews. Kitcaster books you on top podcasts. Click the link in the show notes for a special offer. Celebrate good conversation. Welcome to a virtual episode of PR Yourself with Leah Frazier, and I'm the host, Leah Frazier, CEO of Think3 Media, and I I can't wait for today's episode because it's going to be the reality check that all you small <laughs> business owners, it's going to be just that little tap on the butt that you need, get you kicked into straight up gear. Um, but I have an amazing, amazing podcast publicist and Christina, please correct me if I pronounce your last name wrong. Christina Linkowski. 
Nailed it. Nailed Yay! it. Nailed it. You did it. You did it. You did it. I know it's very phonetic, but it throws people off. So I totally get it. I totally like, get it. Sound it um, out. How many syllables? Sound it out. And you got there. You did it. You did it. Um, Leah, I am so excited to talk to you today. Um, I love talking about PR just like I know you do. So this is going to be an awesome, awesome episode. And yeah, I just can't wait to get into it. So Christina actually has sent me some incredible guests because she's a podcast publicist. She has clients that she puts them on a podcast to help them with their personal branding, to help them with exposure and gaining, mm -hmm. uh, becoming trusted authorities in their industries. And so tell me a little bit about how you coined yourself as the podcast publicist and just really narrowed in as this is how I want to do PR. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I have been in the PR and marketing game for almost 20 years. And I started in-house working for a company in my hometown of Portland, Oregon, and then moved into agencies and into other work like so many of your listeners have as well. I know that are in the PR realm and kind of did that for about 15 years. Um, and then I had my daughter in 2014. And at that point, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going off on my own. Um, I'm going to you know, freelance, I freelanced for a couple of years. And then I decided that I was going to start my own online business. And I was going to create a course about tourism PR. That was my particular area of expertise was tourism PR. And I know you work in some tourism PR, with some tourism PR entities as well. And that was like my thing. And so I was teaching entities how to get their own PR. And I drank all the Kool-Aid, y'all. I was like, I'm going to create a course. It's obviously going to make a million dollars while I sleep. Like, no problem. Bing, bang, boom. Here we go. Done and done. Write the check, et cetera. And uh, I created the course and it was great. I'm, I like, truthfully, it was one of the most rewarding experiences because it was so much work. Um, and I was just so proud when it was done. But when it came time to promote the offer, I was like, all right, I'm going to just do, I, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing here. This is a whole new world. I'm just going to follow the steps that are laid out for me. And so at that time, and this was like 2017, 2018, the steps were dump a lot of money into ads, have that go to live webinars and have that go to emails that are obviously going to just sell again, a ton of money for you. And I was like, okay, cool. This is what they say to do. Let's do it. And so I launched my course and in a shock to no one but me, it was an absolute disaster. It maybe sold like two or three, something like that. I remember my partner was like, what are we doing here? And I was like, shut up. <laughs> like, you don't know me. Like, I'm building a out, funnel. You know? <laughs> exactly. I'm doing things. You don't get it. Um, and so what I did the next time I went to launch is I tap back into my intuition and my 15 plus years of PR experience. And I started getting myself booked on podcasts. I started pitching myself to podcasts that were full of my ideal audiences. So the tourism entities that I wanted to get in front of and my business did a complete 180. Um, people were just buying my course off the shelf. They were asking me to come speak at events, asking me to consult, et cetera. And I was like, oh, okay. So this was just like the magic sauce here. I kind of had to go back into the publicity, the publicity work to do that. And that all went great for a couple of years until COVID hit. When COVID hit, the tourism money, I knew right away. Remember those blissful three weeks that we all thought we were just going to sit at home, watch Tiger King, bake some bread. And then, you know, I did all of it. Bang, bang, boom, we were back. And we all did that. We all did all of that. You know what I mean? And then, and then it was like, oh no. Um, and I knew even in that three week time, three week time frame that the tourism money was going to be going down a ton. And so imagine, obviously, as that continued, I was like, we're, we're done here. And so I had already had in my mind to pivot to teaching people how to book themselves onto podcasts, because it was something that they could so easily do during COVID. It was something that they could just be doing from their home office or from their home and still be marketing and promoting their business. So I did that. But by the end of that year, I had so many people that were like, yeah, could you just like do it though, that I started pitching on behalf of other people and then built the agency that I have today. So really for me, the niching down in podcasts just came from seeing in my own business and now in all my clients' businesses, what guesting on podcasts did in regards to getting them out there and in front of those ideal audiences. I think that is incredible. Um, and what you have done so far, I was just kind of looking at the hundreds of brands that you have helped 
um, just by mm-hmm. having a podcast strategy. And this is one of the areas that I feel like in PR, we try to get our clients on board and they're more mm-hmm. like, I want to be on TV. And it's like, yes. no, but maybe you should do like the podcast will actually be more beneficial or will pay off a little bit more in terms of numbers, but I want to be in bright lights. <laughs> no. mm-hmm. So what is it, what yes. are you seeing in terms of just podcasting as a strategy. I know a couple of years ago, um, it was still really foreign to many. Um, but to mm-hmm. me, sometimes these numbers do better than broadcast TV and radio. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you just need to take it as recently as this presidential election. Um, and if you look at our two main candidates that we have, either one, they are guesting on podcasts. Yes. They are not Yes, I mean they were like, they "Why was Kamala going? Harris on?" I forget which one they were. Why so was she on call her, dad, call her Daddy? Was the big one that she was on that people were going nuts for? But the thing is, so many people after that were like, "I know way more about Kamala now than I did before that podcast episode." Right, and the reason for that is because Kamala's team, Trump's team, know this is what people are listening to, especially the younger generations. They are not watching 60 Minutes. They are not watching TV. They are not watching the news. So how do we get in front of them where they actually are? And so, again, I mean, I can give you no no greater trend than just seeing it in this year's presidential election. Podcasts are the it girl. They are that girl in this election because that is where the candidates are actually showing up. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I am a big Breakfast Club listener and they've had every they've had the Democratic Party representatives on there. They've had Republican representatives on there. But to your point, that's what we're listening to. Mm -hmm. And it's a part Mm -hmm. of their strategy, which even some of these artists, they're not even doing regular rollouts on radio anymore. They're going to Mm -hmm. uh, live streamers that stream all Mm day. Um, And that's being more beneficial than get me on TV, get me in a magazine. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think I think that there's just so much there for people to take from it. And beyond that, I mean, podcasts continue to grow year after year. Podcasts grow, grow, grow. The pandemic was a huge like ignition point for it. You know, it grew almost 30 percent in 2020, 2021 alone. So it just continues to go up from there, not at those same numbers, but it continues to gain traction. There are stats out there that 49% of Americans listen to a podcast at least monthly. So 49% of Americans. Now that's not, that could be any kind of podcast, right? Across any kind of genre. But I just think that that is an amazing number for you to keep in mind. More people listen to podcasts than have Netflix accounts. And if that doesn't blow your mind, if that doesn't tell you that podcasts are where people are, uh, I don't know what will. Um, Talk to a little bit more from the angle of a small business owner who Mm -hmm. wants to see the value in doing this and how do they even get started? How do they even get going? Absolutely. I am here to tell you there's so much value in you getting on podcasts. Um, People want to work with those they trust. And when they hear your voice and they hear you giving your true authentic self and insight, et cetera, in that, That is what ups that no like, and trust factor so dramatically, okay? So this is also a great thing. Like, you better believe this this interview I'm doing today, this is going to get chopped up, put on my socials, it's going to be put on the the website, right, et cetera. So this is a great, chop it up. Chop Chop it up, up, Christy. Chop it up, (laughs) chop it up. This is a great, great way for you to be creating content that is relevant for your audience very, very easily. I'm all about working smarter, not harder. And being on podcasts is one of the best ways to do that, okay? So with that all being said, let's talk really quickly about a couple ways that you can find the right show's audiences for you to get in front of. Because 100%, Leah, you are exactly right. That is people's like number one question. They're like, yeah, this all sounds sounds great. You know, like this all sounds great. But how, yes, Shayla gets it. She gets it. It's our dirty um, South. You know, we got to yeah, chop and screw music. I love music. it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Amazing. Um, so, you know, this is something that we really, you know, this is something that I know people have a lot of questions around. So I have two tips that I'm going to give your listeners today. One is, this is really easy. I want y'all to do this today. Go ask your audience what podcast they listen to. Okay. Go put it on your socials. Put it in your Nest PS on your e-newsletter, okay? Just say, 
hey, I'm always looking for new shows to, to binge or to take a listen to. What are some of your favorites? Now, some of those shows might not make sense for what you do as a business. That's fine. You know, my audience knows that I love true crime shows. So they're always sending oh, me really Christina, great true crime too. shows. Wait, oh, oh, I was just listening to one. I'll tell you off camera the one I'm listening to right now. It's so good. Please, it's so good. please. Um, I, need the list. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I am. A, and by the way, that's like, it's crazy how popular true crime is. But if I ever have a client that's looking to get on true crime shows, something has gone horribly wrong. So that's not like <laughs> something that, that for business, you know, we're necessarily looking for. But I'll get some of those from my audience, which is great. But what I'm really looking for are those shows that I haven't heard of before. Shows that I don't even know about. You know what I mean? That they send me and I'm like, fantastic. We had even we don't even know this show existed. So that's a great thing for you to be doing quarterly, you know, every couple months. Throw it up there and just see what people are listening to. Like, you know what I mean? In your stories, just like, hey, shoot me. Let me know what couple ones there. And some are going to be huge shows, but some are going to be shows that are really going to be relevant for you. Okay. The other thing that I recommend is go into your preferred podcast player. For me, it's Apple Podcasts. That's what I use. And I go in there and you put in, I, I call this my podcast piggyback strategy. Okay. So you're going to go in and you're going to put in someone's name that has a similar audience to you. Okay. So they might be a competitor. They might not. All right. That that's, that's totally okay. It might be someone that has a complimentary service to you, but you have the same audience, put it in and see what shows they've been on. Okay. Because that is a great place to pitch a, eh? I don't care if your competitors already been on a show, you just need to pitch them with a different idea. Okay. So you can absolutely be doing that, but secondarily scroll down to the bottom to that you might also like, or people that like this show also like, and you're going to go down a rabbit hole. Y'all, there are over a million podcasts. Okay. You are going, I have to actually set a timer when I do this work, like when we're researching clients, because I will get way too in the weeds, find such cool stuff, et cetera. And then I'm just listening to episodes. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of, you just kind of get into it, but this strategy works so, so well for people. And it's a great place to just get a jumping off point. Find 10 shows doing that research in that way that you can absolutely be pitching and you know have that right audience for you and they're interested in what you have to say. I love that. So from finding the podcast and putting a poll or whatever you got to do, polling your current audience and figuring out what mm -hmm. they're listening to. And then two, looking at that preferred podcast on whatever player or distribution channel mm -hmm. you're um, linked up with the most. That, mm -hmm. I mean, those two alone, great strategy. Great, Thank great you. strategy. Thank you. Now, yeah. how do you control mindset when someone comes in and they have the mindset that, well, the reason no one's heard of them is maybe because they don't really have that many listeners. So I need to be going on Oprah's podcast versus Chopra, <laughs> Fopra, yeah. instead of Fopra's podcast <laughs> Fopra. next door, <laughs> because maybe Fopra doesn't have as many followers. And I really just feel like that would be a waste of my time. How do you mm -hmm. manage the expectation of the client that's like that? Yes. I love this question, Leah, because I was telling you beforehand, that's something that happens. People will come on and they'll, you know, I'll get on a discovery call with someone. And they're like, I just, I don't know. I think I just need to be on like Oprah's or, you know, the Amy Porterfield or the Joe Rogan or whatever. And they haven't been on a podcast, like not even a podcast. And we're just going to go straight out for the video. Okay. Like that, that, that's not necessarily how this is going to work. And what I want you to keep in mind is, are you doing this because you want to get your name out in front of a lot of people? Or are you doing this to make money? Okay. And if you are doing this to make money, then you are getting in front of the shows that have the right audience, even if that is a smaller audience. Okay. Our clients regular, we've gotten our clients, Leah knows this, she has all the fancy names there. We've gotten our clients on big shows in their industries. Okay. And that is wonderful for their visibility, for their credibility. Like it's great. But when it comes to making money, our clients see that the most on the smaller niched shows that are full of that person that really, really cares about what it is that they have to say. So I want you to keep in mind, like, like to give an example of this, I will have people say to me, you know, like, uh, you know, and by the way, finding numbers of podcasts, that's not something you can just find publicly. Okay. So you're not even going to necessarily know how big a show is or what their actual listenership is. But let's say you find out that information and it's 500 listeners, okay? 
I will legitimately have people say to me, I don't know if that's worth my time. And this is their exact, Leah gets it. She gets it. This is their, they ain't and even got their, 500 followers on Instagram to be talking about somebody not that, else's platform. Somebody else's, and they're like, oh, I don't really know if that's, I don't know if that's it. And this is like a perfect fit audience for them, right? Like it is a perfect fit audience for them. And I will say to them, I'm sorry, but if you got a call right now to come speak at an event in front of 500 of your ideal clients, you're telling me you wouldn't go. And they're like, oh, no, I would do that. Okay, then why would you not sit at your house and take an hour of your time and record a podcast interview that's literally going to be in someone's ear? I'm getting all spicy today. You got me all worked up, Leah, talking about this stuff. But I think that it is so, so important for you to, to understand that as long as it is the right customer and the right client, it is even if it's 10 people, it is always going to be worth your time. And... This is not in anything that I sent you before, but I'm thinking too, if you're prepared and you have that preparedness, then that 10, those could be high ticket clients. So if you're prepared and you have, you have products and and you have Mm -hmm. things that you're ready to sell and you have um, a high ticket or a medium ticket item, then converting a couple. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, I don't need it. I don't need vanity numbers. What I need are people that are coming in and actually then becoming clients, actually then purchasing a service, right? That to me is worth way more than having a hundred new people on my list that are never going to take action. Yeah. Did you know that podcasts are a great way to grow your personal and business brand voice? Listen, here's a secret. We all want to feel connected to brands we buy from. So what better way to humanize a brand than through sharing your story on a podcast? Think about it now. You in bright lights and on PR yourself with Leah Frazier. Hey, it could happen. Listen, Kitcaster is a podcast booking agency. They're one of the friends of the show that specializes in developing real human connections through podcast appearances. So if you're an expert in your field, you have a unique story to share, or you have an interesting point of view, it is time for you to explore the world of podcasting with Kitcaster. You can expect a completely customized concierge service from their staff of communication experts. Kitcaster is your secret weapon in podcasting for business. Listen, your audience is waiting to hear from you. Don't make them wait too much longer. So what you're going to do, you're going to head to kitcaster.com. That is K-I-T-C-A-S-T-E-R.com forward slash PR yourself to apply for a special offer for friends of this podcast. And listen, don't delay. Get with it today. A lot of your amazing guests that you guys love so much on this podcast came from Kitcaster. Don't delay. Next time it needs to be you. So let's say somebody's listening in right now. I see uh, Shayla's made a couple of comments and she is so awesome. She's an author. She's authored a couple of books and I know she's looking for ways to publicize um, some of the books that she's written Um, and they're Mm -hmm. ready to dive in. They're going to take those two major tips that you just gave us. Mm -hmm. And what, what is a good number should to start with? Cause we can definitely go down the rabbit hole, but is it saying let's pitch a hundred or let's pitch 200? What are your, what are your, I would actually say, let's pitch 10 to 20. Let's see how that goes. And the reason that I say this is I do not want you spraying and praying. Okay. And what that means is if Leah hasn't used that term before on this show, and she very well may have, is that you are just writing a generic pitch and sending it out to as many people as you can. Okay. Because it will not get you the results that you are after. All right. Leah gets a lot of pitches, I guarantee to you. And I bet you can tell me, but I bet a lot of them, you can tell that they were not personalized to you. They were just written, they were sent, and the person literally prayed and said, (laughs) exactly, spraying and praying, literally said, I hope they get back to me. I hope that this person gets back to me. No, that's not not how we're going to do it. And that's not how I recommend you doing it. I instead want you to come up with some really solid topic ideas, come up with what we call our pitch template. That's what we work off of at at our agency. But then you are going to personalize it to each host that you want to, okay, that you want to send to. And that's why I say more like start with 15 to 20 pitches and see what happens. Have them be researched pitches, ones for ideal shows for you. 
and see what happens. You know what I mean? We could, you could easily be hearing back from a couple of those folks, right? And kind of my main thing that I like to say to people is if I could give you any advice, it would be to be on two shows a month on average. Okay. I think that's a really great number and a realistic number for you to be around and to see movement in your business. Because if you think about that, let's say you're on two months a show on average, understanding some months you might be on one, some you might be on four, right? But let's say on that two average, you're going to have been on 24 podcasts at the end of a year. And I can pretty much guarantee to you that your business, you it will look different at the end of that year than it does at the beginning. You are going to have so many more connections. You are going to have so much more content. You are going to be so much more comfortable in your messaging and what it is that you talk about. There are going to be just the, the things that will come of it, you can't even imagine right now. And so that's why I want you to stay really realistic with the amount of pitches you're sending and the amount of interviews you're trying to do. Um, because I truly believe that consistency will get you further than burning yourself out, trying to send a ton of pitches and then do a ton of interviews. Now, oh, I'm like, this is so good. We only got, you know, so much more time. So <laughs> no, I know. So there, there's a couple of things that I want to address just before we wrap. And so one is what if somebody's like, now you said so much, mind blown. What should I absolutely have in my pitch? And A, I love that you said to personalize it because the reason you're here mm-hmm. today is because it was like, mm-hmm. hey, Leah, you just had one of my guests on your show. And then even Mm -hmm. in working with your team to get you here today, they were listening to some of the past episodes, which let you know you actually tuned in (laughs) to get here. Exactly. So what are some other maybe best practices that you have around pitching? Yes. Yes. One of my biggest best practices is come with topics. Okay. Um, I say this because I see people pitch sometimes and I hear from hosts That I and I truly think that people think that they are trying to be more helpful by just telling a host, like, hey, here's a bulleted out a couple things that I'm an expert in. And I think that they think that is helpful for the host to maybe come up with a topic that's around what they are an expert in. But y'all, you are making it so you are giving the host another job to do. Okay. This goes way back to my journalism days at Oregon State University. We are making it as easy to get to a yes as possible. So I want you to come with specific topics, all right? So, you know, three, like two to four topics that you know would just be a great fit for their audience that they haven't talked about before. And these, by the way, you're going to go on shows talking about the same thing. So don't feel like you need to come up with new topics for each tip or for each pitch that you send. Generally, you're going to be sending pretty similar topics. Again, you're going to personalize it, but they're going to be generally very similar. So I don't want you to stress about, well, I already did this on a show. Yes, you should. Okay. You should be doing that on multiple shows. Okay. I just had a client the other day. She's like, I feel like I'm saying this on too many shows. I'm like, good. That's exactly what we want, right? We want your messaging to get across different shows because people aren't listening to those different shows. They're hearing you on this one show. Right. So we want to make sure we're getting that main message across there. Um, So having those topics is super important and a great way to kind of get started. Y'all, I'm not saying copy and paste it because we'll every host will know, but just go into chat GPT. Just say, here's my website. What are three or four topics that you think I could talk about on podcasts? It's going to spit some out for you. You find if you think some of those are good, let it be an inspiration. Again, don't copy and paste it. We'll know. Everyone knows that something's chat GPT. We all know. We all know at this point. But it can be a great place to give you ideas and a good jumping off point to then write, you know, a couple of sentences about a topic that you think could make a lot of sense. You know, and so I like everyone likes to hate on chat GPT, but I think it can be wonderful for giving us those things that can inspire you to come up with an idea. Um, and so that's a great place to start. All such great tips. So We're going to use Christina's advice. You're going to pitch it. You're going to personalize it. And it's going to get accepted. And you're going to go Mm -hmm. on at least two podcasts a month, which will equal up to 24 a year. And you're going to watch your business or your brand grow. Now, Mm -hmm. here's the last question, which is always the hardest, especially for a small business owner. And that is repurposing the content. So you appear Mm -hmm. on these podcast episodes 
let's talk about repurposing it, clips, like how do you really maximize that one appearance? Mm -hmm. I love this question because there's a couple different ways that I recommend. Um, when it comes to audio snippets, I adore Headliner. So if y'all don't know about headliner.io, it is a wonderful tool. It's free up to a certain number, okay? Um, and what I love, it, which makes it different than a lot of other things, is you, as long as the episode is published, you can make clips out of it. So a lot of the AI tools that are there today, you have to be inputting the whole, like you have to get the audio file to have it chop things up. But the thing about Headliner is you don't. So you just are able to go to the show, put in the episode, chop it up. Now, of course, when you share it on your social channels, I want you to be tagging the host, naming the show, right, et cetera. Of course, we want to give credit to who actually owns you know, that, but they're going to be super happy that you're promoting it even more. So don't stress about that, okay? So I love headliner.io. That's a great one. And like I said, it's free up to a certain amount a month. So that's wonderful. Um, I know I already said her, but Chad GPT, y'all. Put an episode in there, ask it to come up with some quotes um, that you can then just drop into Canva, okay? Have it put in some codes, have it do these things, make it easy for you. And then my last tip, because again, I told y'all at the beginning, I'm all about working smarter, not harder. You can hire someone on Fiverr, y'all. You can find someone and say, hey, here's five of my podcasts. If you don't have a team member that can do it, by the way, you could easily have a team member do some of this stuff too. But if you don't, hire someone on Fiverr, be like, hey, here's five of my podcast episodes. I want you to make X amount of clips from it. I want you to do a blog post from it. I want you to do whatever it is that you want to do with it. Um, one thing I will say, do not sleep on blog episodes from every podcast episode you do. Okay. That is a huge one for SEO purposes. So have that be almost priority number one. I would honestly say when it comes to chopping up your content, using it in different ways, making sure you have those backlinks in there um, because it's going to help you in that way as well. <sighs> Christina, I just, can we <laughs> yeah. pass the offering plate around? <laughs> Look, Dr. <laughs> Stephanie Carter. Dr. Stephanie, do we have, do we need to ask her for a cash app? She says, awesome information. <laughs> no, that is, that is awesome. And I saw, I've been getting something pushed to my feed called Opus. I haven't tried it. So if y'all try mm, it and it doesn't okay. work out, do not get mad at me. <laughs> but I'm going to try it. Apparently it'll, it's just like you said, you take the link. So it could be the link from mm -hmm. uh, like this gets pushed to YouTube. So I can take this YouTube link. I put it in. Opus, yeah. and it'll do 10. It says viral, but whatever. 10 different clips from this episode. And so oh, cool. it uses okay. AI to figure out what those 10 clips will be, Love which it. I'm like, that is great because nothing is worse than having to go through the episode, figure out what the sound bites are, clip exactly. it, republish exactly. it. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to try headliner as well. Uh, will you tell me how it is? Please. I would, I would I love will. to know. I would love to know what you think of it. Yeah. I'm going to try it with your episode. And of course, with another one that was yes. right for yours that we were talking about and see how I think they give you, just like you said, a certain number for free. Um, okay, cool. And I will let you know how it works out because Christina, I can't I'm, wait. I'm the I'm glad you said it because I'm the slowest. So I'm slow. With, I'm fast with getting these published, but I'm so slow because I want it to be the right sound bite. Da, da, da. By the time I know yes. it, y'all have already shared it and used all the platforms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love that. I love that. But it's like if we can make it easy and simple, like I love these tools that are making it easier for us to be able to do this and for all small business owners, because it used to be someone had to go through and listen to it and pull stuff out, et cetera. And it's like, hey, take advantage. Progress over perfection always. So and no let's, one let's has time for all there. of that. We got, we no. were trying to make no. money. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so let's just say, Christina, somebody said exactly how you said, like, look, I, I don't want to do all that. I want to hire somebody else to do that for me once they get sick of doing all the things we talked about today and they want to reach <laughs> out to you. Talk to us just briefly about publicity with Christina and what you do for your clients and how they can get in touch with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes. So we offer a service at Publicity by Christina that is our podcast pitch broker service. And so we work with our clients for six months or 12 months. 
and we get them booked on podcasts that just like we talked about are full of their ideal audiences. One thing that's very unique about us is we offer a guarantee. So what that means is when we work with our clients for six months, we guarantee we'll get them on at least eight podcasts. We work with them for 12 months. It's actually 24. So just like I talked about kind of that number that we're looking for our clients. So it's something very, very unique that we do um, in that. But that's a nice thing about podcasts is we kind of have the ability to, to do that there. Um, so we would love to have you come on over. A great place to start is I have a free private podcast um, at podcast or wait, sorry, publicitypodcast.com. There we go. I love a vanity URL. You guys, I can spend all day just buying <laughs> vanity URLs, um, but it is publicitypodcast.com. And that is where you can get in there. You learn all about our process and then it talks about how to apply for that service. Is this, let's see, I'm going to add it in publicitypodcast.com. You got it. Yay! So you guys know what to do. Head there. Hit Christina up. Yes. And thank you all for tuning in, Christina. Thank you so much for generously sharing your expertise with us today, giving us a little bit of hope and inspiration that we can do this podcast and thing. <laughs> you can. <laughs> you can. To publicize the brand. And where did you already uh, tell them where to find you on social media? Yeah. Find me on Instagram at Publicity X Christina. Um, it's publicity by Christina. I did it with an X. Y'all thought I was so clever. And now it's like the bane of my existence. So anyway, <laughs> it's publicity X Christina with a CH. Please, please, please come tell me you heard me on Leah's show. I love when people DM me after they hear me on things um, and that they're so motivated to get started. It like makes my whole day. Fantastic. And for all of you guys tuning in across all of these different platforms, I am going to put that link in the comments here as soon as we log off. Thank you so much for tuning in, Christina. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I'm you for having me. Myself. So good. Good. <laughs> love, yes. love to have you back with go ahead and pitch me more new ideas because you were just so okay, awesome. I'm on it. And everybody else out there, enjoy the rest of your day. And there you have it. That is our episode with Christina Lankowski of Publicity by Christina. And man, she knows her stuff. Okay. I hope now that after listening to this episode that you're able to see the value in setting up podcast guest appearances. I think a lot of the times small business owners and entrepreneurs put so much weight on traditional methods of media and press and really don't see the value in being a podcast guest or maybe on somebody's YouTube channel. And we're really seeing the major players going in that direction because there's so much value there. So I hope that this has helped you. If it has, you can go ahead, send me a little message on PR Yourself Podcast on Instagram. Or you can go to the website, PRYourselfWithLeahFraser.com and let me know how this has helped you or your business. Look, we thrive when you can like, comment, share, and subscribe. So please subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Share this with somebody that you know and leave us a rating or review if you can, no matter where you're listening to this from, because this helps to move the podcast up the ranks and we want to do the absolute best that we can for you bringing back stellar guests with stellar topics that can help you PR you and your business better for the future so once again like comment rate review subscribe and I'll see you again on the other side until next time